Hey, this is Tom Jacobs from tdjacobs.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and also an energy worker and a channel. And at tdjacobs.com, you'll find a ton of tools to help you along your journey, wherever you are, whatever phase you're in, including resources on Chiron, uh, the Chiron course, uh, my book, Chiron 2012, The Aquarian Age, The Key and How to Use It, and also the Chiron Natal Report. Uh, the Natal Report will give you um, specifics on your house and sign and natal aspects, transits and progressions to your Chiron, but also transits of Chiron to the rest of your natal chart. That's under natal reports at tdjacobs.com. This video is on Chiron and Pisces, natal Chiron and Pisces. Now, as you may know, as this, um, this recording is uh, June of 2018, recently, within the last few weeks, transit and Chiron went from Pisces into Aries. But what I'm talking about is the natal placement. And, and um, for the last eight or so years, a lot of people uh, being born have uh, Chiron and Pisces, but also people, many people born in the 1960s have it. I'll put the dates for both of those uh, periods in the description of this video so you can identify uh, if you have Chiron and Pisces. Um, there's a little interesting note that I was thinking about, try not to get too tripped up on it, um, because I'll talk about Chiron and Pisces being a resistance to or a hesitation to surrender and let go of control. Uh, with uh, Pisces, any planet working through the lens of Pisces, as I'll describe, needs to surrender and let go and, and flow with things and relax and, and give up control. But the people born in the 60s with Chiron and Pisces have Pluto and Virgo, which is an Earth sign. So they're going to want to try to control things. And the people, the younger people now who were recently born with Chiron and Pisces have Pluto and Capricorn, another Earth a sign that can tend toward control. So it's a little interesting, uh, interesting thing here. If you're following along uh, with evolutionary astrology and what Pluto means. So first I'll put your attention on the way I work with Chiron is unique. Uh, I've channeled some stuff about it that I've talked about in the Chiron management video. So gather there about 35, 38 minutes. It's a little bit of an investment of time, but it's really worth it to understand this perspective. Some of what I describe in this video may not make total sense to you until you have watched those videos and really understand the principles. I work with Chiron as an energy antenna. So it makes you sensitive to energy. And wounding and healing are, in fact, responses to or byproducts of that sensitivity. So you understand wounding and healing in a very different light when you treat an, a Chiron as the energy or an emotion antenna. So um, the way I work with it is that well, there's a wound that gets triggered when we're infants, and we become hypersensitive to how others see us or respond to us when we do this particular thing uh, in, our, in, you know, through our behavior and our choices in our lives. Now, because this wound is formed when we're infants and we're much too young to have any way to deal with it or understand what's going on, we develop certain protective uh, defensive strategies to avoid having our vulnerabilities exposed because we fear rejection when it comes to, to Chiron. Now, I did do a series of Chiron in the natal houses that you should check out, uh, one through 12, different video for each house. Uh, and I've also published uh, Chiron and natal Chiron and Aries. But I want to get into this Pisces thing now. So any planet working through the lens of Pisces, as I said, needs to surrender and let go of control. Now, Chiron is this hypersensitivity to how others react to you and fearing rejection if you do this thing. So Chiron and Pisces doesn't want to open up to feel, to surrender to what's happening around, to go with the flow, to surrender to what's happening in the world around the person. So where other people can pray something out and meditate, I've had healers tell me to meditate stuff out. You just got to meditate that out. And I'm like, uh, but um, Chiron and Pisces is a wounding to letting go. Now, when you relax and surrender open as any planet in Pisces would want to do or would naturally feel inclined to do, you're going to be open to or susceptible to being more deeply affected by energies and emotions in the world around you. The problem with Chiron and Pisces is a fear of being overwhelmed by energy and emotion. So people with Chiron and Pisces are afraid to relax really or too much because they might be overwhelmed by the by the by the, by the just the multitude of stimulus around them.
So the pain and suffering in the world, when we open through the lens of Pisces, we're aware of, you know, the plight of the abandoned kittens. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the sad story, I'm not laughing at the kittens or the people, but like, but like um, the sad stories, the tales of woe, the pain and suffering in the collective. Pisces represents our, how we, when we merge, we end up merging with the collective or the collective consciousness or unconscious. So Chiron and Pisces is going to want to resist surrendering, relaxing, open. So sometimes because of that thing about when I open that I'm more vulnerable or susceptible to absorbing stuff, some people with Chiron and Pisces will have developed strategies where they might open to a trusted other, a lover, a spouse, a friend, a pet, but they might not feel willing to be part of the world and embrace that they are part of the fabric of creation. So people with Chiron and Pisces may feel cut off from the collective. You could think of it, and he pointed in Pisces, as seeking you know, a connection with a higher truth or through a higher truth, seeking, seeking a connection with the collective and, and all that is and all of humanity and the cosmos. So the wound with Chiron and Pisces can be, because of fear of overwhelm, getting cut off from the collective. So, um, you know, feeling compassionate toward all of the, the plight of the kittens, right? The abandoned cats or whatever. Compassion is one of the Chiron endpoints, but people with Chiron natally in Pisces might fear opening up, which might prevent them from really being able to feel, to, uh, to feel compassion. I'm not saying they're all hard hearted or they're mean or cruel or looking in their psyches. It's all gray and, and uh, you know, indifference to life, but they may to try to protect themselves to try to try to shield their very vulnerable Chiron sensitivity. They may cut themselves off from such feelings from being open enough to have compassion. Now, if I say, if you have Chiron and Pisces and I say to you, well, the key to this story is having compassion and letting everything flow through you without taking personally anything you feel, without absorbing it, then I'm asking you to be open to experience quite a lot of energetic stimulus that may seem to threaten to overwhelm you, that may make you afraid that you'll be taken over or that you'll drown in the pain and suffering or the sorrow or the grief or the whatever it is that's happening you know, in the world around you or in other people. But if you can have compassion for the human experience and the, the plight of humans and animals and the, the fact that suffering is part of the world, then you can better move through it, allow it to happen and flow through you. If you have Chiron and Pisces and your heart is shut down, you're going to be unhealthy and unhappy. You're going to feel that something is missing from your life and that you're doing something wrong. And yet, if you just open your heart, you might feel overwhelmed. So let me give you the strategy. One of the Chiron things for every, anybody's Chiron is to be grounded in the body, uh, centered, connected to the earth, you know, being aware of your, what your feet are touching all the time, right? Grounded and centered. So you know what energy is yours and what isn't yours. And I ask people to cultivate this over time. And there's a free 13-minute grounding MP3 on my webpage, my homepage that you can download and use daily to, to, to work on this practice. And I have a bunch of other tools you can email me with questions uh, about other tools for grounding and you know, meditation, excuse me, and getting centered. But um, from that grounded place, then you can open up and flow with things, but not take things personally, not absorb things. So the intention that you're not going to absorb the energies and pain and suffering but you're choosing to be aware of it and you're going to be compassionate with it, compassionate toward it. That's really key. Now, because of this potential to be overwhelmed by the enormity of the suffering in the world around you, um, part of you might think you can't possibly fix any of it or heal any of it. And I do want to make this one note here. As I said, the people born in the 1960s with Chiron and Pisces, many of them have that Chiron opposite Pluto and Virgo. And Pluto and Virgo says there's a soul level mission to be specific, to be useful and practical, to hands on heal things, to make progress, to fix things. But the, the Pluto opposed by Chiron and Pisces, and it's a lot of people born during the 1960s, that says in a bunch of lifetimes, they are overwhelmed by the enormity of the pain and suffering or the endless nature of people's pain and suffering or 
I just helped 50 people and I looked out the window and the line goes around the block, there's another 200 people. That, that sense of overwhelm, because Pluto and Virgo needs to be very specific. So just be aware if you're in that older generation, not, you're not, you know, you're not five or eight years old right now, but if you're in that older generation, born in the 1960s with, with Chiron and Pisces, then you are confronting in many lifetimes, can I afford to be compassionate? Well, what kind of jerk wouldn't be? Wait, if I help people, am I gonna lose myself? But who am I if I don't help people? There's like this, uh, this rock in a hard place that a lot of people with that might be in. Now, since as of you know, May or something, 2018, transit in Chiron entered Aries, that means that the Chiron returns for almost everybody with natal Chiron and Pisces is over. And so the Chiron and Pisces natal return opens the door to the wounded infant and also the call to be compassionate, but to learn more about energy management. And um, as I said uh, earlier, uh, check out the Chiron natal report at tdjacobs.com because it will treat house, sign, and aspect, um, including if you're close to your return, the Chiron return around age 50, and transit the progressions to your natal Chiron and transits of Chiron to your natal chart. And um, really the, the teaching that I use with Chiron here is to open the heart, but to be so grounded and managing intentionally your energy and your emotions that you can engage with the world and be compassionate and bring compassion with you, but not be overwhelmed. For people with Chiron natally in Pisces, that, that tendency toward overwhelm may be even stronger. So that call to get grounded is even uh, more uh, important. So thanks for your time and energy and check out those resources at tdjacobs.com. Uh, take care of yourself.